Hello, everyone. It's Thursday, my favorite time of the week, where we talk about robots and robot trading and everything everything else that goes along with that. Uh, this week, we have a lot to talk about. I've got a lot of information, a lot of things that I'm excited about. I'm starting to get pumped up. September 1st is a big moment for me. I'm going to be adding a lot of things, testing a lot of things, so uh, it's getting closer and closer to that. I've got some traveling, and I've got an important birthday for Jill, who is my training partner, life partner, emotional partner. <laughs> She's my partner in everything. So that's coming up. So we've got a lot going on right now, um, but I'm really looking forward to today and the weeks to come. So let's get right to it. First of all, as I mentioned, if you go to scottwelsh.me, that's my website. Uh, the weekly email list is growing. We're well over 2,500 uh, people on the weekly email list every Wednesday. I write about things that hopefully are interesting to you and will help you. Uh, all you got to do is go and get on that list. You get a free ebook, and we go from there. Uh, and that's every Wednesday. I've been doing that since 2013. So love to have you on that list. All right, moving on. Um, before, though, I've got a lot of data and stuff to talk about. Last week, if you missed it, we talked about the power of missed pivots. And we did it under the context of, I want to plan a long trade. Well, how do I plan a long winning trade? Well, let's go to miss pivots because we talked about how miss pivots are a magnet and planning trades to miss pivots is a very nice way to plan out a big winner. Now, just going to the charts. Last week, which was about August 7th, 8th, what is today? Something like that, 8th or 9th. We were right in this area. See this little doji here and this little green candle? Candle, candle, candle. And this was the most recent missed weekly pivot long. We talked about how price likes to hit missed weekly pivots. And I said, well, it'll probably hit that shortly. And it was, lo and behold, just a few days later. Now, check this out. It hit it almost exactly. Do you see that? Is that crazy? And then it moved up and then eventually moved, went down the next day. But it went up and it only went like a few pips above. It went from here right to that target. Then we had a down day, and then it came back up to the top, and then it had a down day, and now it's coming back up again. Just reinforcing that these missed pivot levels matter. Why does it go exactly to this level if it doesn't matter? Isn't that weird, creepy, interesting? So seeing that and knowing we have missed pivot up here, and we have a huge distance to a missed pivot up here, how do you feel about stuff like that when you see it happen in real life? Does it make you want to trade to miss pivots more, less? I'll just leave that aside, but isn't that crazy that it went right up a few days after? But anyway, the point of today and a little bit in the newsletter um, email yesterday is that I'm kind of tired of the craziness, and craziness meaning people who just kind of throw stuff out, idea, throw out ideas. For example, someone comes to me, a tennis player, and says, I want to play Wimbledon in three months. Well, have you started? No. Have you played tennis before? No. I I am extremely in favor of big dreams. I just yelled at a poor child. Didn't really yell, but you know what I mean. But I instructed a poor child just the other day, and I said, your dreams aren't big enough. You need to increase your dreams. It will help your life. So it's not that I don't believe in big dreams, but what I don't believe is crazy lunacy, right? We had, there has to be some realism in your dreams. Okay, what do I mean? Well, one of my favorite quotes, my favorite trading quotes of all time is from my friend Rob Booker, not surprisingly, but uh, I'm not just blowing sunshine. I really love this quote, but there's a book called Millionaire Traders, which profiles some millionaire traders, <laughs> strangely enough, and Rob has his own section slash chapter. And in that section, he said that people talk to him and say, well, people, I know someone is doing better than you. If you're an expert, uh, what do you think of this? What do you think of someone who's doing better? And his quote was, well, those people who's do, who are doing better than me don't pay my mortgage. And I just love that And because I, I feel the same way. I did my whole tennis career. People say, well, someone did this and someone. I don't care. My students are doing amazing. I don't, I don't care what anyone else does. And honestly, in trading, I don't care that much. I am always interested in any trading information. But anyone who says, you know, there's a MyFX book link that's making 400,000%, it's like, I don't really care, right? I care about paying my mortgage, just like Rob's quote. So I just don't, I'm just not into craziness, right? Now, if there's something realistic that can make my trading better, well, that's different. All right. 
And in the weekly newsletter email yesterday, I mentioned an email that I got from someone who wanted to make $1,000 a month. And making $1,000 a month, I would love for you to think that. I would love for everyone to think that. I have mountains of evidence that I've seen with my own eyes that say you can make 1000 bucks a month in trading. It can be done. Now, it gets into, well, how big is your trading account and how much risk you're going to take, of course. But the catch to what my email said yesterday was that they wanted to make $1,000 a month and their trading account was only one thousand dollars. Ah, you remember the example from yesterday? If that's real, okay. If I could promise that, or if anyone could promise that, and you compounded the gains, and you made one hundred percent a month, one thousand dollars would turn into four point one million in a year, right? For heaven's sake, go get that four million. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to anyone. If you can make 100% a month, go do it. I think that's awesome. And tell people about it. Don't tell people about it. I don't care. Just enjoy your riches. But I made a point on that, all right? And I, I don't, I'm not even necessarily making fun of anyone. I'm just saying you have to have a modicum of realism. And this is extremely important. If you are getting into trading now and you're new and this is your baseline, well, I've heard from somewhere saying something anonymously on the internet that you can make a thousand bucks a month with a thousand dollar trading account. If this is what you're looking for, you almost 99.9% .9 chance that you will never succeed in trading. And there is also a 99% chance that you may never be happy in your life. I mean, this is crazy. I remember a story of a student. He was awesome. He started as a beginner. And within like 12, 16, 18 months, he was one of the top 40 players in the entire Midwest. All right? Of thousands, he made it to top 40 from nothing. And he quit. You know why he quit? Because he said, well, I probably won't get to number one, so I quit. I mean, this was a great kid. Super athletic, super fun, super intelligent. But what, what's up with that? First of all, you don't know if you can get to number one. But second of all, having realistic, unrealistic expectations, I mean, that would just make you so unhappy. His expectations were so high that his incredible achievement was nothing. He was just sad. And if your baseline is $1,000 a month on a $1,000 account, the chances of that are almost zero. You're going to be ha unhappy almost all the time. Yes, we need outrageous, preposterous goals, but we need to back up those goals with something that's seeped in reality. Saying I want to play Wimbledon in five years, well, let's talk about that, right? I'm interested in that, but talk about play Wimbledon next month. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to make a thousand bucks on a thousand dollar account. It's not going to happen. Well, 99.9, .9, okay? And this is a really important point. Okay, I'm your coach now, all right? This is Uncle Scott, your coach, right? I want you to set the proper goals. I hate seeing people fail. That's why I share my thoughts and I do this, right? It is not a goal, if you and I are talking, it is not a goal to say, I want to increase my leg muscles so much that I can jump to the moon. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like Superman, I'm gonna flex my legs and I'm gonna jump and it's gonna go so high I'm gonna go to the moon, right? That's my dream. Um, what? Like, oh, <laughs> what? That's not going anywhere. That's not, that's just a pipe dream. However, a goal to say, I want to be the highest jumping person in the Midwest. I want to have the highest vertical in the Midwest. Well, now we're talking. That's still a preposterous goal to say, okay, I'm just going to start and do it, right? But it's doable. There is a difference. If what you say is your goal cannot be backed up by any sort of action, then it's not a goal. It's a daydream. It's nonsensical. If you want to jump to the moon, there are no steps that you and I can go over together to say, okay, we're going to, okay, if you do this exercise, we're going to jump to the moon. It's never going to happen. Or to say, I want to literally move a mountain. No, you're not going to pick up a mountain with your biceps, right? But you can take action steps for the stuff that is attainable. You can take steps to be the highest vertical jumper in the Midwest, and you can create a company that is an earth-moving company that moves the equivalent of one mountain, but not literal. 
Dreaming alone doesn't get us anywhere. There have to be steps you can take that allow you to take action. If you're not taking action, it's not anything. Get it? <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's nothing we can do to take action to make 1000 bucks on a $1,000 account, at least not consistently. And all right. And after all, all I said, you know what? It's got me curious. And this is just happening right now in front of your eyes. I want to, maybe I should go look and see if you, one time, right? And there's no way consistently, but can you make 100% in a month? I might have to research that and get back to you, but um, making it consistently, no. Okay, so let's talk about realistic goals, all right? Let's say we want to be one of the best traders in the world, right? We, did, we don't want to put an imaginary number on it and say, I want 10,000% tomorrow. But let's just say we want to beat everyone else. It's not preposterous to say I want to be number one in the state or number one in the Midwest or number one in the country or number one in the world. That's not preposterous. People do that. There are steps to take. So what are the steps you could take to say I want to be the best trader in the country? I want to be one or at least one of. I want to be one of the best traders in the world, okay? Well, yesterday I mentioned two, and I'm going to mention more today. Let's say you and I have a goal. I want to be one of the best traders in the world, okay? Well, here are two. Bridgewater, and I talked about it yesterday, so I won't again. One of the most famous firms in the world manages $160 billion. Two Sigma is a quant firm, which I think is relevant considering if you're here on the webinar, we're quants, right? Quant traders are robot traders. They have five different funds, and they're all losing money in 2017 through July. So that's pretty updated information. And if you look at Bridgewater's entire roster, the only winners are their Bridgewater All-Weather Fund, which is up 6% for the year. Okay, okay. And the other one is on the, from Two Sigma, their Risk Premia. I love that name. That name makes me feel like I am so unworthy and they are so much better than me. And that's why I love it. Premia. Let's invest in the Risk Premia. That is marketing right there. And they're up 0.6%, all right? So the Bridgewater All Weather, one of the, in their roster, that's the only one of their major funds that's up 6%. And Two Risk Premia has one that's up, but it's basically not up at all. Okay, but that's not all. Have you ever heard of Greenlight Capital? Well, Google it. It's one of the most famous hedge funds in the world by a famous hedge fund manager. How is it doing in 2017? Oh, it's down 2.8%. Okay, well, how about some other big dogs? Well, and, and by the way, if you manage even $1 billion, you are among the biggest and the best of anyone. Carlson Capital, not that famous, but <clears throat> they manage $10 billion. They have five funds down in 2017, their top five. And that's it. that goes from negative 2% down all the way to negative 14 So. Bridgewater, five funds down, and Two Sigma, five funds all down. Carlson Capital, five funds down. Graham Capital, bigger than Carlson, right? $14 billion under management, down 2.3%, okay? Down, 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 down. Billions of dollars, right? These are the best traders in the world. How else are they managing this money? They're not managing this money because they have a nice slogan. They're managing this money because Hundreds or thousands of people said, you're the best in the world. Here's my millions, right? These are the best of the best, and they're all down. Are you beating that right now? And when I say beating it, meaning are you positive at all? Are you $1 positive sitting there listening to this or here on the live webinar? If you are up even $1 in your account, then my recommendation is you need to start managing billions of dollars, right? Because you are beating all these people, all of their resources, all of their staff, all of their advantages, you sitting at home, if you're up even $1, then you're beating them. So is it a realistic goal to say, I want to be the best trader in the world? Um, if you're up in 2017, you might be beating the best traders in the world. That's realistic goals. That's exciting. All right. But are there anything else better? than these hedge funds that we're talking about. Okay, well, anything positive is better than that. All right, so we got that straight. But is there any robot 
traded by little people. You know, just regular people talking on Thursdays and a little internet talk, right? We're just having a little internet talk. Just a regular person. No hedge funds here. No billionaires here. Is there any robot that or, that anyone could trade that can beat the billionaires? Well, before we talk about what about the market, right? We've talked a lot about index funds on these webinars and these blog posts. Just the regular old S&P you know, index fund, right? The market index fund. Well, the market, as of a few days ago, is up 10.4% for the year. So just an index fund, which we all have access to, right? We don't have access to billions in hedge funds, but we do have access to robots by little normal people, right? I love the term little people, right? It's pejorative. I don't mean Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> the market is up 10.4%, right? That's not bad. Well, I talked just a few weeks ago about my slingshot robot. It is the first robot. The f these are the first robots I ever made, right? And I made them poorly. I made a lot of mistakes. And I made them back in 2012, and I haven't touched them since then. Well, how does the slingshot, some crappy idiot, robot maker, you know, me, right? I'm just, I didn't know anything back then. I think I know tons more now, but I might still be an idiot. That's up to you to decide. If you can handle a month end drawdown of 15%, right? So if you traded the slingshot and a on a month end basis, meaning at the end of the month, you, total, you totaled up the worst losing streak and you said 15% is what you could handle. Okay, so 15% drawdown. Then the slingshot, these novice robots that I made in 2012 would be up 9% for the year. These robots that I built, not knowing a darn thing about anything, would be crushing the billionaire hedge funds and on par with an index fund. <laughs> okay? Wow, right? That's pretty cool. However, the market's at 10%. These robot, this robot portfolio is 9%, okay? So, well, index funds are better. Well, let me ask you this. What is the max drawdown if you trade an index fund? If you trade an index fund, there are no stop losses, right? So what's the worst the market has done in recent years? Do you know? Raise your hand if you know. It's about 50%, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on your index fund. I like to look at Vanguard. So if you are an index fund trader, you have to accept a 50% at least maximum drawdown. Right? You know that's going to happen. Well, this remember, this is only 15. So if I triple the risk and make the slingshot and the market the same max drawdown, the same risk, the slingshot portfolio is up over 27% for the year. That's almost three times the market. And this is a beginner robot made by a beginner. Okay. Wow. Does that give you hope? Does that make you feel positive? Because I hate billionaire fund traders, whatever, that make us feel like we're nothing. We're small. We're tiny. We're little. I don't like people that bully other people and say that you can't do it. You don't have enough funds. You don't have enough. Right? I'm telling you, you do have enough to beat the best in the world. Not $1,000 a month on a $1,000 account. I'm talking about beating the best in the world. And it can be done, right? Now, what else? Working our way back to the title of this episode of our show. It's not a show, but I think it's a show. What about those magical missed pivots? Well, let's look at missed pivots in a different way. We talked about the magic of missed pivots last week, but those are planning big trades and probably not using stop losses. And we didn't have a structure. We didn't have rules. We just said, hmm, we're sitting in a chart. We open it up. We see some missed pivots. Well, maybe I'll take the trade today, right? That's very discretionary, right? And this is a robot trading webinar. So there are no rules. But can we use missed pivots, the concept, knowing that they're almost always hit and can we use it in a structured robot trading system? Well, we can, right? I used MT4 numbers on the missed pivot robot that comes in one of my courses. Sorry, shameless, right? There's the course, How to Make 50% Per Year on Purpose. This robot 
comes in that course. It's $127, so it's not that expensive. There are a bunch of systems in there, stock systems and whatever, but this is a weekly pivot robot that I just tacked onto that system. So it's for MT4, and all it does is says, hmm, weekly pivots get hit. Therefore, if, the, if price gets far enough away from an unhit pivot, let's trade to it. That's it. So simple. And it's all explained in the course, blah, blah, blah. All right. But the point is not to buy the course. The point is I want to show you something. All right. Using MT4 numbers for 2017, and all I did was I took, see, this is the Scott Weekly Pivot Robot, right? And I don't even know this. What this, this is, I think, the Hornet on the screen, so ignore that. But this is the pound dollar weekly pivot robot. And all I did was run the test and then I got the report, right? So on uh, using 0.75 lots, this robot made 987. See that? And that's just for 2017 from 1-1-2017 two, from one, one, to now. Got it? Right? To 8 thir Well, not exactly now. 8-13. Okay. So almost now. The euro dollar has made $1,275, so that's in profit. Oh, that beats the hedge funds. The dollar yen is up $1,600. That's even better. That beats the hedge funds. The pound dollar, you just saw that, is up 987 And the fourth one that I talk about is the pound Swiss, which is down for the year, just like all the hedge funds, but it actually has been coming back. It's been doing well lately, so this number is beginning better. Okay. So what does all those mean? Well, those are well. first of all, add them all up. That beats hedge funds, right? But... And they use 0.75 lots on all these, right? I recommended in the course and in the videos, and when we talked about this system before, so let's trade this on about a $30,000 account. So if you add all that up and divide by $30,000 account, that's a 10.4% gain of the year, which is exactly as an in, same as an index fund. Isn't that awesome? So an index fund is probably, well, I don't know. Is it easier? If you bought an index fund and just bought and held, that's pretty easy, right? If you put these robots on your chart and then never turn them off, is that harder or easier? <laughs> I mean, it's about the same, right? Uh, whatever. These robots don't ever need to be touched. They don't need a human to get involved. All right, they're super simple. So it's similar to index fund, right? So that's about a 10.4% gain in the year, which kills the hedge funds and is the same as the market. But this is assuming if you trade it on a 30K account, that's only about a 25% drawdown maximum. So it's the same as the market, but half the drawdown. So that depends on what you like. You like trading the stock market? Fine. You can kill hedge funds just by doing an index fund. You like trading robots and Forex? And you like to have less drawdown for the same return? Well, then you could trade something like a simple robot <laughs> that I built. Not a hedge fund, not billions of dollars, no R&D, no research and development. Just a simple robot that is available to anyone in the world, okay? Again, I don't like people who tell you you can't do it. I get very angry, right? So bottom line, I want you to be successful, and I don't want you to psych yourself out. The fear of missing out is a killer. Do you understand that I study so – anyway, in my spare time, if you don't know, I read books on uh, human psychology. Animal psychology? No. I read books on psychology, how to achieve things, mindset. That's what I do for fun. And there are more and more people depressed now than ever. Uh, the iPhone generation has been horrifying for mental health, by the way. They are great. I have an iPhone. I think they're great. But they are horrifying because of fear of missing out. More people are depressed now than at any time in human history. And almost all of that comes from not being thankful for what you have. Quit worrying about making 100% a month. And if you're positive, you are better than some of the best in the world. If you're making money at all using any system, you are a star this year. A star, right? And if you're making good money, you are, you are a superstar. So quit worrying about 100% a month and realize the realism of being the best in the world doesn't mean 100% a month. It just means be good, be consistent, be repeatable, right? And instead of feeling hopeless that you're missing out, understand that there are things out there available that can work better than the billionaires. An index fund is out there, right? That's practically a robot because you buy and hold it. 
I have robots. I'm giving you the facts and figures of robots that are available to the general public, right? That's what I come here for, to provide solutions and to pump you up a little bit maybe sometimes, right? There are, you saw two, right? The slingshot, which is a ridiculous robot, right? It's based on sound principles, but ah, still a little embarrassed on how I built that. And then you've got the weekly pivot, again, based on super sound principles. You saw those two. The Hornet is doing way better than those for much less drawdown. I'm not even going to talk about that because that's only available to lifetime members. So there are multiple things that I have seen with my own eyes that are crushing the billionaires, right? And you are sitting there right now. If you're making money, you already may have a superstar system. I want you to know that it's possible to beat the billionaires. I want you to know that regular people can't win. And that's really the message of today's webinar. Okay? Let's get to any questions that you might have. I'll scroll back a little bit. we got some people writing in. Good. Oh, no. A few comments. I hope it doesn't get out of control like it did a few uh, weeks ago, if you know what I mean. Freddy the Freeloader and Red Skelton. Douglas asked me if I remember Freddy the Freeloader. I do. <laughs> Do you add a manual position to dollar CAD? Uh, we talked about that, Douglas. If I added a manual position and I said I did a, a cop out, but it's the only way to, to answer a discretionary trade, did you enter a manual position? I said you could have, yes. Um, back down when it was at the bottom. I said in this area, I wrote a post, and that even said yesterday, or yesterday, last week, that you could add one, yes. So that's up to you, though. That's up to you. Up to you. If you're discretionary trading, I can't give answers. Robot trading, I can give you definite answers, which is why I like robot. Oh, Douglas wants to name my next robot Premia. <laughs> that's hilarious, and I'm going to. That is awesome. Mel says, feeling good. Excellent but they have to move billions of dollars. An individual won't be able to duplicate that success with a much larger account. So Daniel brings up the point, well, billionaires have billions under management, so it's much harder. And yes, I agree. Um, I think, though, Daniel, and again, I don't trade billions. I only, Daniel, I only like to talk about things that I know. I only will mention things that I'm 100% certain of. So... Any conjecture, I don't really get involved in. Well, so and so could have. I don't believe it could. Have. I don't. I don't care that much. But that being said, Daniel, here's what I think. I think if I managed a billion dollars, I would not be negative right now. Okay, I can't prove that. All right, this is me being cocky. Right, but th that is pitiful performance. Let's be honest. Right, and if you traded the FX market, it can handle billions. Right. Of all the markets, which one can handle the biggest size? Which ones? Forex. What are the systems I talk about? Forex. Right. So, again, I have no desire to ever compete with billionaires ever. I'm just a regular person. But I feel like um, we as regular people should not worry about missing out. We should worry about kicking their little fannies. So, excellent point, Daniel. Thank you for that. Uh, or futures. Yeah, Douglas says futures. Yeah, we can talk futures, too. <laughs> That's funny. All right, everyone. Uh, I, I just I came across those facts and figures a few days ago, and I wanted to talk about it. Um, it. It can be done. And don't ever underestimate the power of being a little person, right? And little means under a billion dollars, right? If you have a couple million, I, I still think all of this stuff applies. I mean, I think size really only matters when you get up into the hundreds of millions. I think that really matters. All right. Nobody will remember, but no webinar next Thursday. I will be on the road, and once again, I won't be able to do it from my car. i got to figure out a way to do that, so I apologize. But we're set through September every Thursday, except for next. Um, we're going to be on, and we'll be here. Um, every Wednesday, there will be a blog post. That happens no matter what. Um, so you'll get a weekly newsletter no matter what. And that's it, and there's the contact information. All right, everybody, thanks for being here. Love doing it, and we'll see you again with a blog post next week. And we'll see you in the webinar in two weeks. Bye for now.